It's a lonely place. It was built before the Civil War, and it was the first one of its kind. It was bombed and abandoned. It was built as a testament to Great Lakes infrastructure during a time when this was becoming a bustling place. It was an engineering success proving that our government could build something long lasting. The recent high water has worked hard to bring it down and in 2005, they cleaned up all the bombs that didn't detonate. It's an obscure, crazy story, but we're gonna head out in Lake Michigan and tell the story of the Waugashant's light station. I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. Channel's Restless Viking. Let's go have an adventure. We're taking off from Wilderness State Park, the boat launch, and we're heading out to uh, Waugashant's light station. We can actually see just beyond the point, White Shoal, probably because the morning sun reflects the, uh, the structure pretty well. We got about 10 miles to go that way, three miles to go out from shore to the offshore lighthouse. Right after the War of 1812, shipping traffic to and from Chicago began to rapidly increase. And all the traffic from Chicago typically came through the Mackinac Straits. And at the very northern edge of Lake Michigan, things become dangerous. And two things make it dangerous. At the end of the 312 mile fetch, the southwester waves come to that, Waugashant's Point. And at Waugashant's Point, the water is very shallow. And beyond Waugashant's Point is Gray's Reef, which is really shallow. And then over there is White Shoal, which is really shallow. So there's White Shoal Light, Waugashant's Light, and Gray's Reef Light. But the combination of the waves and the shallow water make it really dangerous to come around that point, especially in the fog. In 1851, that's 10 years before the Civil War, they built this amazing, imposing structure. It was the first crib lighthouse to be built on the Great Lakes and most considered to be the first lighthouse completely surrounded by water. It's one of only three birdcage lanterns on the Great Lakes. I don't think when they first built the birdcage that they thought that 170 years later, there's gonna be a bunch of birds on top of it. So at the base, it was five and a half feet thick. They had wrapped it all in steel, but now you can see how it's deteriorating. On October 8th of 1871, the Great Lakes caught on fire. That same day, there was the Great Chicago Fire, the Peshtigo Fire, which involved a large swath of coastline on Minnesota. Holland and Manistee, Michigan were on fire. The Thumb had forest fires and Northern Michigan had forest fires. And the keepers of this lighthouse rang every bell they had for a week straight because a thick cloud of smoke covered the entire lake, worse than fog. And mariners were trying to pick their way through this area and many shipwrecked, but they saved a few by ringing the bells. Then in 1912, just after White Shoal Light was built, Waugashans was no longer needed and it was abandoned. And then, during World War II, the lighthouse was bombed and crashed into by aircraft because the military was developing their first drone program to pilot drones from a remote pilot in another airplane. And all the wooden structures on the crib caught on fire and were destroyed. After the bombing, the bullet-ridden steel sheath around the tower and the base fell off. And it's amazing that it withstood all of that destruction. And there's rumored to occasionally be some ordnance out here that's still found by crews. And in fact, they did the last official cleanup of live ordnance out here in 2005. And rumor has it that they still come out here to clean it up. Today, Waugashants is on Lighthouse Digest doomsday list for most endangered lighthouses in the United States. You can see White Shoal Lighthouse off in the distance. It smells here, there's Kumarant guana everywhere. There was a nonprofit that was formed, I believe in 2000, to try to restore the lighthouse or at least continue to repair it. And to fix the base alone was gonna cost $300,000.
Sadly, in 2021, they couldn't keep up and they gave up and the nonprofit dissolved. Then the structure was given back to the Coast Guard. Those that wanted to save the lighthouse have formed an admiration society. They asked to remove and preserve the unique birdhouse cage on top, but the request was denied. We came out here with a sense that this might be our last glimpse of the lighthouse standing. But I'm always impressed with this 170 year old structure. It was built before the Civil War. And being 170 years old isn't impressive by itself, but it withstood the waves, the weather, thousands of tons of ice, and not to mention bombing and being crashed into by drones. Well, there it is, Waukeshaunt's Lighthouse. It's still one of our favorite places to visit, and it's gonna be interesting to see over the years what happens to it, as nature persistently works to take it down. I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. The channel's Restless Viking. Like, subscribe, and share. Thanks. Oh, wow. It's beautiful.